I can never be depressed if I never slow down. Speed is extremely important. Speed defies gravity. How, do, how does a plane fly through the air and defy gravity? Speed. It's moving too fast to fall. If you're always attacking life, if you're always doing things, if you're always making more money, if you're always traveling the world, doing this, doing that, new car, here, there, new podcast, me and James English, boom, boom, boom. You know, if you're always doing things all the time, unhappiness can't catch you. But I also know that speed is a is a fantastic way to be happy all the time. I'm always looking forward. I'm always looking forward to something. I wake up every day excited. I'll go do this today. I'll go do this today. I'll go do this today. And I very much live my life in a frame of no, I have to do this. It's very much a, I get to do this. There's another thing that a lot of people make a mistake with when I talk to them. Like, oh, I have to go to work today. Change your language. I get to go to work today. Imagine you had no job. It'd be worse, right? Because otherwise you wouldn't be working. So you get to go to work. Oh, I have to fix the car. At least you have a car. You get to fix your car. Most people don't got one. Oh, I have to go get the kids. You get to go get the kids because you have these beautiful children who love you. You understand? People's even their own language is wrong. It, the world is can be framed. Maybe I'm completely crazy. Maybe I'm full of shit, like you said. Maybe I am. But the frames I've installed in my mind are all beneficial to me. So if that makes me crazy and full of shit, good. <laughs> because I can't become depressed. So you can sit there and tell me I'm full of shit while you're depressed, and I'm happy. And I would never want to adopt the thinking of a depressed person. People will, people will shield laziness with anything. No one wants to admit they're lazy. So they'll shield it with disbelief. Ah, that's a scam. Or, I don't work hard, I work smart. Bollocks, more, more cover. So just anything it takes to say, Do you I don't want to work. Do you believe in that? Work smart, not harder. I believe in both. Yeah. But there's a time when it comes to work smart. And most people are trying to do the smart work before they do the hard work. It's kind of like talent, right? You don't notice if you're talented at something until all the hard work's done. Yep. I could be the most talented tennis player in the world. But I don't play tennis. So if I go down the tennis court, Joe Schmo is going to smoke me. I don't get to see my talent until I've worked so hard that I'm in the top 1%. And now I'm beating them because I have some God-given gift. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to do the hard work first. If there's no hard work, there's no smart work. So someone's going to sit there and go, I work smart. I don't work hard. So I only have to work an hour a day. If working smart gets you a lot done in an hour a day, then you should work smart for 12 hours a day and yeah. get 12 times the work done. I, I am absolutely and utterly a believer in hard work. I'm a proponent of hard work. I have all this money and all I do is work. My entire life is work. This podcast is work. I'm getting the car and going to another meeting. Work. I want to go to the gym so I'm in good shape. Work. It's all work. My entire life is work. And people don't want to look at life that way. They want to talk about work-life balance and being lazy and all this crap. I don't believe in any of that. I believe in if you want to win, you have to outcompete the man who's prepared to do nothing but work. It's player versus player. If you're going to sit there and go, I don't want to work more than an hour a day, well, the guy who does want to work more than an hour a day is going to beat you. And no matter how smart you are, there's always a smart dude who's doing the same smart work you are for more hours than you're doing it. That's just the nature of the game. It's the way that humans work and the way that we are, we've evolved as a species is that we don't really learn lessons unless they're learned the hard way. Yeah. I believe that unless a lesson has taught the hard way, you're not going to learn it. You can have so many near misses that people won't learn their lesson. Bro, you must know a guy who goes out there, nearly crashes his car, nearly crashes his car, nearly crashes his car, doesn't slow his ass down till he wrecks it. Yeah. Like, this is how people are, right? So you need that pain for the lesson to sting enough to really genuinely go inside of your mind. And it's the same with everything. It's the same with driving a car or business. Truthfully, if you want to learn a lesson about business, you're going to have to suffer at some point, right? Mm -hmm. So we always say that most people are not successful with their first companies, X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. I get that. The truth is, there's a lot of people who make a lot of money with their first company, but they just spunk it, act an idiot, and it all blows up in their face. And that's the, and that's how you get the discipline on your fourth company. That when you have three million in the bank, you just leave it there. You know, it's yeah. and don't and don't be done with it. So you need to you need to go through some pain. You need to experience some negative things. You need to have to, uh, to a degree some trauma to really even learn any lessons. So, yeah, business studies. You're right. The book. That's, that's not going to teach you anything about business. You need to get out there on the streets. You need to you need to make mistakes. You need to suffer. You need to have the tax man knocking at your door. You got to deal with all that stuff so that you make sure it doesn't happen again. I really think that, that humans are stupid enough to only learn the hard way. That's, and and life really doesn't have to be that complicated. When you see somebody that has something you want, you just got to try and work out how they got it. Yeah. And that's the missing part. Most people see people with things they want, and they don't do the, the second half. They don't try and work out how they got that thing. Oh, my man has a Ferrari. Okay. I wish I had a Ferrari. Okay. They don't sit there and go for an hour. How did he get a Ferrari?
It doesn't cross that. That part is the part they don't want to do, right? They just go, oh, he's a Ferrari. Wish I had a Ferrari. And they go back to TV. Yeah. And that's why they lose. It's player versus player out here, man. It's on the street. It's not easy. For every dollar you make, for every pound you take, you took it from someone else. You don't make money. You take money. People don't understand the way that money works. You're not the Federal Reserve. You can't create money from thin air. Every single pound in your bank is money you took from someone else. And when I say take, I don't mean it in a negative way. You might have convinced them to give it to you. You might have a coffee shop. I'll give you a nice coffee. You'll give me some money. Cool. But you still took his money, yeah. right? So if you're out here trying to take stuff from other people, don't you want to have a team? You want to do it by yourself? You want to be Rambo? Because you can get two of you doing it. You get two of you. you. That's right. So the whole idea of this lone soldier, this Rambo, I'll do it all by myself. That's all dead, bro. You need to have a team. It's player versus player. And for the same reason, if you were out here on the street and want to defend yourself, you want your boys around you. It's the same thing we're trying to get rich. If you're laughing with your boys, yeah. the brokey days are great. And I'm not complaining about being rich. Obviously, I worked hard for this, and it's, it's a fantastic life I live now. But I think without those brokey days, without those original days to compare it to, without that juxtaposition, then I don't think being rich would be fun at all. I think it's only fun because you can compare it to the days when you weren't rich. That's the only thing that makes it fun. The only thing that makes my $10,000 stake fun is that you can laugh saying how you never had 10 grand in your bank till you were 27 years old. Yeah. Like that's the, otherwise it's boring. Otherwise you go, okay, stake. And I think if you're born with too much money that you'll never truly be happy. I think you need the broken things, the best things. That's it. You meet somebody wealthy, their family at one point was not wealthy. And then the one shows up. One person changed the family tree forever. In my family, I'm the one. And it wasn't because I wanted it or I hoped for it. I fought for it. I want to fight for my family. I want my mom and dad proud of me. I want me proud of me. I want to look in the mirror and be happy with the man I look back at. That he gave it everything. That he went for it. That's what I want for you. I want you to be happy with you, not cool. I've seen all kinds of cool guys my whole career. Cool guys go broke. They have a good two or three years. Players who implement strategies that get focused and intense, they win decades. You gotta win year after year after year. I'm almost 50 years old, man. I've got a loaded calendar. I'm after it. I'm not casual. I wanna win. You hear me? Wake up! You wanna win? You wanna be a millionaire? You gotta quit being so casual. You walk slow, you implement things slow, you talk a good game, like you're gonna be somebody. Business is a sport, it's competitive. You gotta get focused and get in a hurry. Wake up, brother. If you make a couple of these adjustments, man, you could change your life. You could change your family forever, it's not casual. You can change the chapters in the book of your life if you want to. You're the author. It might be year two, three, four before you get your big win, but you can decide now, I'm going to walk, talk, and be a different person. You're the lead character in the story of your life, but too many of you let the, what I call the extras of life dictate where you're going. Y'all hear me? Here's the truth. Most people's dreams can be bought. With enough failure, they will sell their children's dreams. They can't still fight. With a little success or a whole bunch of failure, most people will sell their will to win. Some of you have sold it because you're making a little bit of money. You don't work like you did when you were making nothing. Some of you will sell your win for some failure. You're probably viable, but if you decided my will cannot be bought, I'll keep fighting for my family. I'm the one. I'm going to change my family tree forever. Decide now. You're going to keep negotiating the price or can you not be bought? That is you. That is you. That no one can do it for you but you. You must understand that. I remember I was playing a game with my nine-year-old son, John Leslie. And I beat him ten straight games in a game called Connect Four. And I got up. I said, I'm ready to go to sleep now. John Leslie said, no, you can't go now, Dad. I said, why? He said, it's not over until I win. We sat down and we played several other games. And finally, John Leslie won and he got up and he yawned. And he said, I'm ready to go to sleep now. What if all of us took that attitude after we face a rejection and a no, or we have a meeting and no one shows up? What if we have that kind of attitude, the cars repossess, nobody believes in you, but you're still looking at your dream. Say to yourself, it's not over until I win. It's possible. I can live my dream. It's me. I've got to make it happen.
It's not over until I win. As you run toward your dream, it's necessary that you have goals, that you write those goals down, that you plan. It's also necessary that you look for ways to always find a way to pull it out when everybody else thinks that you are defeated. But the next thing, ladies and gentlemen, I want to share with you that some of you already know that it's hard. It was hard when just over three years ago, and I fell on some hard times, and I was sleeping in my office. It was hard coming into the lobby, and the security says, can we see you for a moment? And he gave me an envelope, and the envelope was from management that said, this is an office tower. Do not sleep in your office. And it was hard coming through the lobby. And sometimes they would laugh at the guy talking about becoming successful. He's bathing in the bathroom upstairs. He sleeps on the floor. Look at him. It was hard, ladies and gentlemen, coming to speak to people. I was behind on my bills and my dreams, and I'm saying to them, you can live your dream. It was hard, ladies and gentlemen. There were times that I doubted myself. I said, God, why, why is this happening to me? I'm not trying to steal or rob from anybody. How did this have to happen to me? And here's what I want to say to you. Don't give up on your dream. No one could have convinced me by holding on, by continuing to push forward. And one day, I would have my own talk show from Liberty City in an abandoned building on a floor, never knowing my mother or father. It's a long shot. No college training, labeled, educable, mentally retarded. But I kept running toward my dream. Don't stop. Don't stop running toward your dream. There are moments when you're going to doubt yourself. There are rough times that are going to come, but they have not come to stay. They have come to pass. It's very important for you to believe that you are the one Begin to envision yourselves as being blessed and highly favored to reach your goals. That you can make your parents proud. You can touch millions of people's lives and the world will never be the same again because you came this way. But that's why you're here. Because you are the one. It's not going to be easy. It was hard laying on the floor, looking out of the window, daydreaming saying, Les, can you do this? Can you make this happen? And something said within me, you're the one.